And there are power indexes preseason that gave that team a 6% chance of winning the Big Ten. How incredibly idiotic is that? Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Buckeyes' win over the Badgers 34-21 at the Big Ten Championship game. Ohio State entry into the college football playoff is secure as undefeated Big Ten champions. Wisconsin gave it a game, certainly, with a 21-7 lead at half, and the Badgers fall to 10-3. Jack Cohn played capably. He was fired up. He was focused. You could see it in his eyes. You could see it on his face. He was poised and confident, completed 12 of 25 for a buck 61, but it was much more than that from Jack Cohn in this particular ball game, especially early on as he was running for first downs, breaking contain, and using his legs to burn the Buckeyes. Jonathan Taylor bottled up by this Ohio State defense back in week 9, 20 carries for 52 yards, and back in the Big Ten title game of 2017 for only 41 yards, ripped off a long touchdown run as Wisconsin went up 7 to nothing. And certainly it could be questioned at the time in watching the first half that maybe the Buckeyes were a bit beaten down having played an emotional game against Penn State in which they played a four-quarter game, had to get up for the game on the road against Michigan. And even though it was a 29-point win, we all know that that's an emotional game like no other and that to come back a third consecutive week against a quality opponent, third consecutive top 10 opponent may have been a pretty big challenge and certainly was for the Buckeyes. More J.K. Moore, Justin Fields. Justin Fields, of course, with the brace on his left knee, seemed quite bulky and cumbersome, but he made it work. Austin Mack had an amazing one-handed catch over the shoulder. Uh, Justin Fields threw an amazing ball on that one. The throw and the catch were scintillating, but Wisconsin's pass rush kept them in the game and kept them up in the game in the first half and stalled the drive as Wisconsin took over. Jeffrey Okuda may be the best cornerback in the country and possibly the highest ranked um, NFL draftee at that position. Uh, hurt his finger, also had a head injury that kept him out of the game in which they were uh, diagnosing that. Cameron Brown came in, so the loss for the Buckeyes there was substantial as Okuda missed uh, the, the majority of the first half. Cone to Quintez Cephas. They converted a third down on a slant, a scintillating play there. Five catches for 92 for uh, Quintez Cephas, who was uh, just about 75 to 80% of the Wisconsin targets through the first three quarters of the game. And again, they ran Jack Cohn bo both in regards to him breaking contain in the pocket, but also some design runs. And he ran it on one of the design plays to the right in which he actually cut, saw a seam, and uh, stopped on a dime and went to the end zone 14 to nothing, Wisconsin. The Buckeyes break out with the fake punt, and it looked like it woke them up. Drew Chrisman, the punter, with a nice pass to uh, Luke Farrell, the tight end, for 21 yards on a fourth and long from Ohio State's own end. That could have been um, critical to the Badgers sealing this game early. It was 14 to nothing at the time. Ryan Day rolled the dice, and it came up snake eyes. And uh, 14 to 7 at that point after the Buckeyes finished off the drive. But it looked like Ohio State might tie the game, but Isaiah Loudermilk with a forced fumble on Justin Fields. You got you to gotta really give it up for this kid. Despite the sprained MCL, he fought. He ran when he needed to even when he didn't take the easy way out. And on this forced fumble by Loudermilk, that's exactly what Justin Fields did. It was a third and goal. He was fighting for too much yardage. He should have just went down. But the forced fumble turned the ball over back to Wisconsin at the uh, six-yard line. And then Cone to Cephas. This was right before halftime. The home run play down to the goal line. That was a tremendous catch by Cephas. Uh, Almost looked like the Super Bowl catch from uh, Tyree uh, against the New England Patriots. Uh, JT had a huge run before that, Jonathan Taylor, in which you got the feeling be based on the time in the field position as though Wisconsin was going to seal it down and go into the half at 14-7 to and be satisfied with that. 
but Jonathan Taylor ripped off the first down run that put them in field position. And then again, Seif was with, with, with an amazing catch down near the goal line. And Cone ran it in from there. 21-7. Wisconsin put 194 rushing yards on Ohio State in the first half in leading 21-7. No team has ran on Ohio State like Wisconsin did in the first half. And, of course, Wisconsin would be the one team on the schedule that would be capable of doing that to a defense like Ohio State. And they certainly did it in the first stanza. 21-7. Second half, new ball game. New ball game. I don't know what was said in the locker room, but this was not Wisconsin gifting or handing the ball and the game to Ohio State. If you track Wisconsin's play in the second half, they didn't just give it up. No turnovers, no bad throws by Cone in regards to bad decisions, bad plays. They didn't fumble. They didn't give it up. No blown coverages. No egregious missed tackles. Wisconsin continued to play their brand of football. They just got overwhelmed by a physically superior team, a just much more talented team. That's all there is to the the size up in the matchup between these two teams. As Wisconsin played, they played well in the second half. Ohio State just brought their A game in the second half, and they are too talented for Wisconsin. Again, Wisconsin didn't blow coverages, didn't miss a bunch of tackles. They are still the passionate, disciplined, poised team that they always are. They brought it in the second half, but the Buckeyes blew them out 27 to nothing. There was a third and seven on the first uh, drive in which uh, Justin Fields improvised. He scrambled around. He hit Chris Olave for 50 yards and uh, five catches, 94 yards for Chris Olave. Another big ball game for Olave. Jeremy Ruckert concluded the drive with the amazing one-handed catch. I, I, I thought as soon as it left Justin Fields' hand, oh, he missed him. But Ruckert stretched out, made an amazing one-hander, 21-14 ball game. Okuda came back into the game, and Cephas continued to be targeted, but Wisconsin's passing game was shut down. Wisconsin's rushing game shut down. They barely gained 30 yards in the second half after rolling up 250 to 300 yards in the first half, 194 rushing. Wisconsin did help out the one time on the punt snap that was dropped by the punter, Anthony Laudy, that set up Ohio State inside the 10, but the Buckeyes didn't even necessarily capitalize fully on that as uh, Justin Fields missed a wide-open Luke Farrell uh, on the throw out to the right flat that would have converted the third down into a first down, so the Buckeyes had to settle for a field goal and still trail 21-17. Wisconsin drove their only real legitimate drive in the second half down to the Ohio State 31 but missed a field goal. K.J. Hill etched his name in the Ohio State record books on this night with his 192nd career reception. He passed David Boston for number one on the all-time Ohio State pass receptions list. Chris Carter is third. K.J. Hill celebrated his monumental feat by just going off on a couple straight series. He just caught ball after ball after ball after ball. He had the touchdown with some nifty moves in the open field. After the pass interference against Caesar Williams, and the Buckeyes finally led in this game for the first time, 24-21. Benjamin Victor on a third and 18 on the next series. Again, Ohio State talent dominant in this game, dominant the entire season. Too much for Wisconsin. The yardage at 256-40 to late in the game, 256-40 to in the second half. J.K. Dobbins, 33 carries for a buck 72. You would have to watch play after play after play after play to see the elusiveness, the cutting ability, the power, the strength. He squats 700 pounds. And Justin Fields, what a gamer. 19 for 31 on the sprained MCL for 299, three touchdowns, no picks. Justin Fields now has an amazing 40 touchdowns to one interception. He deserves, get me straight on this one, he deserves a Heisman Trophy, but there's only one of them, and I would still vote for Joe Burrows. I would still give the award to Joe Burrows, but Justin Fields deserves a Heisman, but they only have one of those, and so it's a difficult call. 
and I'm still siding with Burroughs. Buckeyes finish at 27-0 in the second half. And again, it wasn't Wisconsin gifting them the game with poor play. Ohio State took it. They are the Big Ten champions. Despite people that thought that this would be a down year for a program that lost uh, arguably the greatest coach of all time, Urban Meyer, one of the top five, certainly. And, of course, an NFL quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. Draymond Jones may be the best defensive lineman at that point, we thought, before Chase Young took over this season. And, of course, two NFL wide receivers in Terry McLaurin and uh, Paris Campbell. But Ohio State's back on top of the Big Ten for a third consecutive year. This uh, program continues to dominate the conference, and they took out most likely the second-best team in the conference, Wisconsin, who may be headed to the Rose Bowl at 10-3. Buckeyes win at 34-21. The next question, based on this performance, which was a tough, tough game for the Buckeyes, dominant in the second half but struggling in the first half, had to come back from 21-7 down against a slightly lesser opponent, at least perception tells us, perceived lesser opponent than what LSU blew apart in Atlanta, defeating Georgia at 37-10. Does LSU take over the number one spot in the nation, according to the College Football Playoff Selection Committee? We will find that out tomorrow. I have ranked LSU number one the entire season. That will not change in my College Football Top 25. That actually makes sense. Ohio State celebrates the Big Ten Championship. Wisconsin comes up that close. Once again, Wisconsin now has lost its last four Big Ten Championship games, three of them to Ohio State. Comment, like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We will see you as I will run down the SEC Championship game, the Big 12, and of course we will take you through the weekend with our reaction to the selection committee's choices. They seem to be very clear-cut at this point for the first time in the playoff era. We will talk it up right here at Mark Rogers TV.